And the reason why I had an abortion before is because I fed into those lies. I believed that a baby was going to set me back. I believed that I wouldn't be successful as a single mom. I believed that this baby would prevent me from reaching my goals and my dreams. And that is a lie from the enemy. That's a lie from the pits of hell. through Jesus Christ, and I'm going to help you to learn how to overcome abortion shame. So if you haven't heard already, I share my abortion story in this video, and um, I just want to let you know that I was just like you a few years ago, and if you're watching this video, chances are you're dealing with some sort of abortion shame um, or depression or maybe even some suicidal thoughts, but I want to help you to overcome that. So. Um, my come to Jesus moment stemmed from not just one abortion, two abortions. I actually had two abortions within my lifetime and the second abortion hit me the hardest and it caused me to have so much depression. I had suicidal thoughts and it got so bad that the enemy was even planting ideas of how I was able to carry out those suicidal thoughts and I decided to seek help. So I decided to go to a therapist for help that didn't help me and eventually I found a post-abortive program through church and that literally not only saved my life, it transformed my life and I ended up rededicating my life, my body back to Christ and shortly after that God called me into ministry. So um, I want to let you know that through Christ there is forgiveness. God is not mad at you, God does not condemn you, God loves you. And he just desires for you to turn away from your sin and just come back to him. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 tells us that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So in, within this video, I'm going to give you some steps to help you to be able to heal from your abortion shame and guilt so that you can experience the true freedom and true healing that is only found in Jesus Christ. All right, the first thing that I want you to do is to understand that the devil is a liar. He will try to condemn you. He will make you feel guilty. He will even try to plant suicide or depressive thoughts in your head because of the past sin that you've committed. But I'm here to remind you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are contemplating abortion, the devil will also try to plant lies in your head telling you that this baby will be a burden. It will ruin your life. It will prevent you from reaching your dreams. No man's ever going to want a single mother. And I fed into those lies. And the reason why I had an abortion before is because I fed into those lies. I believed that a baby was going to set me back. I believed that I wouldn't be successful as a single mom. I believed that this baby would prevent me from reaching my goals and my dreams. And that is a lie from the enemy. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Babies are blessings throughout the Bible. People pray for babies. There's not one story or verse within the Bible that mentions that babies are burdens. God bless people with babies. In Psalm 127 verse 3 it says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. A lot of people have this backwards philosophy that they don't want anything to do with anybody who has a kid. Quite honestly, you gotta, you gotta reverse your thinking because a lot of that stems from a demonic ideology. Yes, I understand people don't wanna deal with baby mama or baby daddy drama, I totally get that. But simply saying that you don't want anything to do with a person just because they have a kid is demonic. Children are a blessing. If you don't want anything to do with someone because they have a kid, that's a demonic way of thinking. So I just want to remind you that as we date, while we're older, we're going to be running into a lot of people who have children, and that shouldn't be a deterrent because ultimately you may be blocking your blessing if you're discriminating against a person who has children. This is why abortion is on the rise right now, because people believe the lies that no one is ever going to want me if I have a kid. So when you feed into the narrative that, oh, I don't want her because she has a kid, oh, I don't want him because he has a kid, you're feeding into that demonic narrative, and you're pushing that lie of the enemy. So I just want to encourage you, if you are looking down on a person just because they have kids, you don't want to date someone because they have kids, get rid of that. Because that is a demonic lie. The Bible says that children are a blessing and a reward from God. I fed into those lies from the enemy, believing that no man would ever want me as a single mom or this baby would hold me back. And that is a lie from the pits of hell. 
So Satan will try to lie to you before and Satan will try to lie to you after, after you have that abortion. He's going to cause you to feel ashamed and condemned and guilty just like he caused me to feel guilty. After I had my second abortion, I spiraled into such a deep, dark depression. It was insane. I slept for days. I would not get out of my bed. My room, my, my apartment looked like someone died there. Like it was not good. Um, and I just felt so much conviction and so much shame and the enemy kept trying to tell me, hey, you know you took a life, right? The only way in which you're able to pay for that is if you kill yourself. And that's what the enemy kept telling me. He kept telling me, a life for a life, a life for a life, you need to die. And I started to believe that. And it got so bad that the enemy started to plant ideas into my mind of how I was able to carry that suicide out. He gave me two ideas. I'm not even going to share with you of what he told me to do. But after he started to tell me what to do and how to carry out that suicide, that's when I was like, that's when I was like, oh, I need help. I need to get help. I just want to remind you that if you aren't in your word, you will become susceptible to the lies of the enemy. That's why it's so important to stay in your word because you are able to defeat the lies of the enemy by standing on the word of God. Although you may be feeling condemned, please remember that that condemnation only comes from the enemy. God loves you and he desires to restore you, redeem you, and set you free in the power in the name of Jesus. No other name can save you. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not the crystals, not the psychics, not, no other name can save you other than the name of Jesus. A lot of women who have had abortions oftentimes feel as though God is punishing them. And I want to let you know that this is not true. When you give your heart and your life back to Christ, and when you repent, and when you turn away from your sinful ways and follow Christ wholeheartedly, God is going to forget that. He's going to remember your sins no more. The Bible says that although your sins are like scarlet, I will wash them as white as snow. Although they are like crimson, I will wash them away like wool. They will be white as wool. God will take that blood from your hands and wipe it clean. He's not going to say, oh, I remember she had an abortion before, so she's never going to have a baby. I'm going to strike her with infertility. He's not going to do that. God is a loving, just, kind God. God is not here to punish you. God is here to save you. God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins so that you may be saved. And when you accept Jesus, then there's no condemnation, there's no punishment, then there's no guilt, there's none of that. God is simply here to call you out from your darkness into his marvelous light, and through the power of Jesus Christ, you will be saved from your sin. The second way to overcome abortion shame is to stay in God's word. Psalm chapter 1, verse 2 to 3, that when you meditate on the word of God, then everything that you do will prosper. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. The reason why the Bible says meditate in God's word day and night is so that you can reprogram your mind by the things and by the word of God. So if you're always scrolling on social media and looking at the latest celebrity gossip and watching Netflix series and movies and all of that, you're feeding your mind with the things that are not of God and ultimately you will leave yourself susceptible to the things of the enemy. When you meditate in God's word day and night, you literally give the enemy no chance of entering your mind. This is why it's so important to guard your heart. The Bible says guard your heart because everything that you do flows from it. This is why it's so important to fill your heart and mind with God's word because every single time a lie from the enemy comes, you're able to instantly rebuke it with scripture. The reason why I fell into a deep, dark depression after I had an abortion is because I didn't know God's word. I said I was a Christian, but I didn't read the Bible. I had no idea what the Bible said, what it did. I did not read the Bible. I went years without reading the Bible. And because of that, I fell into depression and I had no way of getting out of it because I didn't understand God's word. I didn't understand that the Bible says that through Christ we are victorious. I didn't understand that I was given the authority by Jesus Christ to rebuke every demonic lie. And I didn't understand the power that I had through Jesus Christ. And the reason why you may be feeling depressed or struggling or hopeless and full of anxiety is because you don't read your Bible. The counselor can only do so much. The meditation can only do so much because the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword, cutting through joints and marrow. It is alive, it is active, and it is breathing. 
And if you don't know the word of God, you will remain susceptible to depression, to anxiety, to loneliness, to fear. Start reading the Bible, not the Quran. The Quran can't save you. So if you are feeling condemnation from your sin, if you're feeling the weight of your sin, turn back to Christ, read your Bible, and cast all of your care and all your anxiety on the Lord, on Jesus Christ, because He cares for you, and it is His desire to set you free. And lastly, one of the ways in which you're able to overcome abortion, shame, and sexual sin is to repent and turn back to Christ. There was a woman in the Bible caught in the act of adultery, and the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus with her, and he said, what, do, what should we do with her? But Jesus did not condemn the woman. He simply said, go and sin no more. I do not condemn you. Just go and sin no more. One of the reasons why you may be feeling abortion shame or feeling guilty because of your sexual sin is because you're still living in it. Jesus does not condemn you for your sexual sin, but he does want you to turn away from it. The first way to heal is to repent. Repentance is not a bad word. Repentance does not mean that you're being judged. Repentance simply means that you're turning away from your sins and that you're following Christ. I'm always repenting of anything that I did, whether knowingly or unknowingly. I make it a daily habit to repent because I always want to be in good standing with God. Repentance doesn't just mean saying you're sorry and going back to doing what you were doing in the first place. Repentance means turning away from your sin and turning back to Christ with your whole heart. So one of the ways in which you're able to truly be healed and set free and delivered is to repent and do what Jesus said, which is go and sin no more. If you still are struggling with abortion shame or sexual sin and lust and fornication and masturbation and all of that, then I have a program for you to help you heal. I have a 12-week program to help you heal from abortion shame and to help you to pursue a sexually pure life until marriage. So here's the things that I need you to do. Number one, there's a free ebook for you to download, which will help you to overcome abortion, shame, and sexual sin. Number two, check out my 12-week abortion healing program and sexual sin deliverance program. It is a 12-week course. Be sure to check it out. And if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me to determine whether or not this program is right for you, then be sure to click the link in my bio as well so that we can get you on the right path. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. God loves you. He absolutely adores you. And there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Turn back to Christ and he will forgive you. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. Jesus already paid that price. All right, so let me know in the comments what you're struggling with and how I can help you. But other than that, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Stay glamorous.